Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message today is our gospel, or our, excuse me, yeah, our gospel reading. And I'm going to read just a portion of that one more time. Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. This is our text. Please pray with me. Father in heaven, we ask, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us in mind and heart and soul that we would recognize all that you give to us and that our hearts would be moved to respond to you with a heart of love, a heart of faith, a heart of trust, even when it is difficult to do so. Help us to see what you do, to trust what you do, and rely on you in that trust. In your name, amen. So, the question was, for what do you want to be noticed? For what do you want to be noticed? Anyone willing to share? For what do you want to be noticed? Nobody's willing to share? Okay, compassion. You don't want to be noticed. Okay, I got that afterwards. Yeah, Dave. Yeah, you did. You say honesty? Yeah. Honesty. Okay, anybody else? Hard work? Faith in God. Some would be being noticed by the Christ. Say it again. Being noticed by Christ. Being noticed by Christ. See, and that's where I was going to go next, so Bob, you spoiled it on me a little bit. So... What about if it was Jesus noticing? What would you want to be noticed? My love for teaching. Your love for teaching? Faith? Love in general? Not only relying on his love, but sharing his love. Right. I want you to think, how many of you have ever been to a Packer game? Are there lots of people who go to Packer games and wear goofy things just to be noticed? Okay. I, I, I couldn't find the picture I was looking for because I was looking for that guy who wears the cheese head with all the icicles on it and on his face and on his beard and everything. You know, he's doing that for what reason? Just to be noticed. And that's really the only reason. But there's lots of other ones because there's people dressing up like Vince Lombardi. There's people dressing up um, in, in uh, I know, a, a Cardinals uniform, all green and gold. And there's so all kinds of things that people dress up just to be noticed. And, and I want you to notice this in our gospel reading because this is what Jesus starts with. And I want you to recognize that the two people he recognizes, the two people that he notices are polar opposites. So for this first warning that Jesus gives, beware the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and like greetings in the marketplaces and have the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at the feasts. Keep going, next slide who devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. What are they doing? Trying to be noticed, trying to gain attention, trying to look important. All about who? Someone else or for themselves, right? Do we see this at all? Let me ask you, did you watch anything in the political season? <clears throat> Because it's all about being noticed, right? Gaining attention for self, gaining glory 
for self. And unfortunately, that's the world in which we live right now, where there are more and more people who are only interested in being glorified in themselves. Maybe I've heard it expressed, what's in it for glory for self? But the opposite. Now Jesus sits down opposite the treasury and watches the people putting money in to the offering box. Could you put up that picture, John? First picture. I want you to notice this, this widow and notice what she's putting into. So the money boxes in Jesus' day were a box, but the way you put money in was this kind of long brass or long golden horn. And so it came up from the box and you'd kind of put it in there. And so when it would hit the side of that long brass or golden horn, it would make noise. They did not have paper money. All they had were coins. And so as you would recognize whenever it would hit, somebody might notice. But Jesus noticed long before it hit. But I don't want you to just notice her. I don't want you to just notice what she's doing. I want you to notice what's going on on either side of her in the background. So on either side of her on the background, if you look to the background on the left, what do you notice? On the left. The other left. Who are those guys? The scribes. Notice the position of their head. There's one commercial on TV I see every once in a while um, for the blind lady. Have you ever seen this commercial? I don't know who would buy from her because she's got her nose way up in the air every time she talks. And, and I, I look at the Pharisees kind of this way. They're full of themselves and they want everyone else to think that they're all it. They would take those seats in the synagogue not be offered them. They would take those high places at feasts, not be offered them. That was all about themselves. And Jesus and his disciples are sitting back on the other side, noticing both, noticing the scribes on the one side and this woman in the foreground. And I think it's really important also for us to know the setting of all of this. This takes place on the Tuesday of Holy Week. So does anybody else know what happened on the Tuesday of Holy Week when Jesus came into the temple? Yeah, he drove out the money changers, right? Made a whip cords, drove out the money changers, all their animals, turned over the cages of the birds, made a great big ruckus. And after all of that's done, then he sits down and he watches. Was Jesus interested in the quantity of the woman's offering. This is not a money sermon. This sermon is not about quantities. The sermon is about what Jesus was looking for. Not the quantity of her offering, but quality, not of the offering, but of the heart. That's what he noticed. The quality of what was in her heart. Because as he notices, what, is, what do we hear in the scripture? Go to the next picture. I want you to look at these two copper coins. Notice how big they are in her hand. Does anybody know the monetary value except what says in the, in the gospel reading? By in today's economy, today's economy, one sixty fourth of a cent. That's what that would be worth today. Like nothing. You couldn't buy a third of a stick of gum for that. But this woman 
has given something of greater value. Go to the gospel reading again and go to the very last verse, verse 44, and hear those words. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, did what? Gave all. Next slide, John. Ha read it with me. Has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. So it was not only a heart filled with what? Trust. It was a heart filled with faith. A heart filled with love and with love. And so all of those things are beaming out of her heart. All she had to live on, she drops something off. Because she believes, hopes, loves Jesus and Trust him completely. She put herself in his hands. Next picture, John. When you see this picture, when you see the crucifix up here, what do you see? Go back. John to the last verse, the last slide of the gospel reading. Change the pronoun to male. Everything he had, all he had to live on. Now the cross. Everything he had, all he had to live on, was given where? To us. Everything that Jesus had, everything that Jesus was, his very last breath, his very last drop of blood, all was given for you and me. All of that was given for you and me. Not to draw attention to himself, but to draw us to him in faith. In John chapter 12, verse 32, Jesus says this, read it with me. And when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw. See, that's what the cross of Christ is about. He is drawing us to himself in faith, drawing us to himself in love, that we may see the abundance and the power of his love, the power of his sacrifice, the deep love with which he all loves us, and that that would draw us to him in faith. In faith. Why do we pray? Why do we pray? I'm looking for a five-letter word, and it starts with a T. Thank you. Because we trust. Trust in him. My prayers were answered this week. I'm not going to make any other statement than that about what took place on Tuesday. My prayers were answered this week. If you don't like that comment, I'm sorry. But my prayers were answered this week. Because everything I did for Tuesday was in my prayer. And I want us to think, then what does God supply? In the worst situations, in the worst circumstance, in the most dire situations, we have a God who does what? Who loves us, who cares about us, who died for us, who delivers us, who sets us free, who gives us life. Romans chapter 8, verse 32 says, He who did not spare his own son, read it with me, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Do you trust him? Ooh, I didn't get a whole lot of response in that question. Do you trust him? 
that's what true faith is all about. He wants us to believe in such a way that we trust him without reservation, without question, without any apprehension, to trust him wholeheartedly. That's what he saw in the widow. How do you think? And it's fun to think about this. That Jesus supplied for that widow in the way that God supplied for the widow in Zarephath. The minute she walked away, was every jar in her cupboard full? Trust is the essence of faith. Believe and trust in the giver of every good gift because he who did not spare his own son will graciously give us all. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Spirit and abide with us all.